Welcome to another Excel tutorial. I'm John Chihuahua from PolicyViz. Today I'm going to show you how to build a tile grid map made of area charts. Why was I inspired to make this particular visualization? Well, uh, you may have seen this tile grid map of area charts from uh, Aaron Davis a couple of weeks ago. Uh, she's showing the uh, time series of where Americans were born across all the states in the US. You can see here, it got like 40,000 likes on Twitter. So people were kind of excited about it. So how can we make it in Excel? Well, fortunately, Erin wrote a great R tutorial post about how to create that map. And to do that, she used uh, a slightly different data set, uh, American voting percentages and shares for each state from 1976 to 2020 and all the presidential elections uh, across four categories, the share of people who voted for Republicans, Democrats, other, and the share of people who did not vote. Side note, Erin's R tutorial is fabulous. If you're interested, you should check it out. She writes up, describes what she's going to do, little code snippet, description, code snippet. It's a great way to write an R tutorial and to learn how to do it. I'll put the link below this video if you want to check it out. Now, for Excel, you can see I've created the version on the right. It's slightly different than Aaron's. Um, I had a little bit of trouble, sort of ran out of gas to make the area chart for Alaska a little bit bigger. So instead, I just left it where it sort of sits in the map and then integrated the labels right on there. But the rest of it with the colors I took from hers, the source notes I took from hers, the font I grabbed from hers, because all of it is laid out in that tutorial. So I was able to just go out and, and grab everything that, that she had uh, provided there, which was great. So let me show you how I created this map on the right. First, we get to the raw data. So this is the data that Aaron provided on the site. And so you can see we've got the year, again, every four years, starting in 1976, the state as an abbreviation, the four categories within each state, again, Republican, Democrat, other, and did not vote, and then the percentage of each one. Now, I'm going to pull from the raw data, I'm going to pull the shares for each year, state, party, cell into the spreadsheet I'm going to use to make the map. And so to do that, I could use an index and match. I could use an XLOOKUP, but I chose to use a VLOOKUP. And to get the VLOOKUP, I basically just need sort of an independent uh, uh, ID number, essentially, for each of these combinations. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to combine these together in a little concatenate function. So I'm going to give the year and then a space, the state abbreviation, then a space, and then the party, what, what is called the party in, in the data. So I get, for example, in this first row, I get 1976 space AK space Democrat. And if I can just match up on those three characteristics, I can get a specific value out of this table. So that's how it's set up right here. So let's go over to the spreadsheet or the worksheet with the map. So here's the full worksheet. You can see I've got a whole bunch of stuff going over here, uh, a lot of data here. Here's the final map, we'll build it in a second. I'm gonna scroll over to the side. Here's Aaron's original map, which I will delete, but it's in here so I could grab the colors and the fonts and get the right placement. And then over here, starting in column BC, I've got all the stuff I'm gonna do for my labels. Okay, we'll get to that in just a bit. So let's head all the way back over. Okay, so first thing I wanna do is I want to have the time series for each state because what I'm essentially going to do here is create a fairly complicated area chart, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have one series down here for this first row of states, right? That's the Republicans along the bottom row, right? Then I'm gonna have a share for the Democrats uh, in the blue series here, all the way across. Then I've got, if I grab it, the other category, small category. Then I've got the do not votes. And then I'm gonna have a little bit of a spacer series that's gonna build that space. And then I'm gonna have another set of rows, right? And so I just need to build this up. So you can think of it as just essentially, you know, X number of rows on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows in this area chart. Okay, that's all it really is. And it's just a little bit of trickery to sort of build the breakers in the way that we want it. So what I've got over here on the first set of columns is really the map. Like if you look at this and turn your head to the right, you know, sort of rotate this, you can see that we've got Alaska here, right, in this column, then Washington, Oregon, California, and Hawaii. And that's basically what we have here. So each row in the spreadsheet corresponds to a column in the map, okay? So now what I need to do for each state, okay, for each state sitting here, I need to pull in the four data series. And I'm gonna do that just by 
using that little combination I just showed you, the concatenate function. And I'm going to match that here in my VLOOKUP, right? So dollar sign A5 is going to lock the A column. Dollar sign B5 is going to lock the B column. Column uh, L column, dollar sign 4 is going to lock that top row so that it's the combination of those three things and I get each value. So if I go just click randomly over here, I'll just click right down here. And if I go in here, you can see that I get the combination of 1992, Wyoming, and Democrats. And that's gonna give me that value right here. So it's really just a bunch of copy and pasting to get that in, and then I'm good to go. All right, now let's look at these half series, okay? So these half series come into play because what I need to do is build a spacer between the different rows because I don't want them to all be on top of each other because then they won't be sort of in, they won't build out into a grid. So I sort of just played around. You can see I have like a little bit of a, of a, of a reference point here. So this is basically says, okay, if this is not missing, give me the, what I sort of call the third, right? So I just kind of like playing around with like my, my, my different values. And I, for whatever reason, when I was playing around, I call it the third. And then if it's, um, if it's not missing, um, give me the full one. And so that's because here you can see for the full one, I want this 1.15 to be the full piece because the height of each state is one, right? It's 100%. And so above that, I want to have 0.15. That's going to be the row spacing right there. And I can change that around, right? If I go in here and change this to, let's just say, zero, right, I can change it. And you see how they're all on top of each other now. So they're still spaced correctly, but they're now adjacent because I don't have any space between them. So let's put that back to 0.15. And so you can see that I just had to build each of these all the way across. And so if you sort of... You can sort of see this map if I zoom all the way out. If you look closely, you can see, again, if you turn your head this way, the map is laid out right here. So the map in the spreadsheet is just turned 90 degrees. So let's zoom back in so you can see that. So once I do that, I basically have this map set up. Now, what about the vertical spacing? Well, my initial thought was to use the technique I showed in a video from the other day, which was to add another series of the area charts, set it to zero, and pop it to the secondary axis, and that will give me my spacer. The problem is I'm going to use a scatter plot to add a bunch of labels and to add all these uh, state abbreviations. And so I can't, in Excel, combine an area chart on the primary axis, an area chart on the secondary axis, and a scatter plot. I couldn't do all that. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a scatter plot that's going to sit at the top, and I'm going to add use some error bars. And if you've ever seen me do some of these tutorials, you know I'm a big fan of using error bars. So let's scroll all the way over and figure out where are those error bars to give me the vertical spacers. So they are sitting right here in the breaker series. So I'm going to grab my chart go to format and go to that breaker series. I have to scroll all the way down. And you can see they're sitting up at, at the top. So I'm gonna um, uh, put those uh, back on so you can see them. So I'm gonna go format and grab that paint can and turn those markers back on. And now I have those little squares there. And so what I do is I'm just using the scatter plot as, as a way to add these error bars. And so the X values, it's really just every 13, right? Because I've got 12 years and then the 13 is the next one. And so it's just every, you know, every third, just multiplying it by 13. And then the Y is going to be the very top, right? And so it's really just figuring out where I want to put it. And then I'm going to have an error bar in here. And if I go back to my format tab and grab my error bars right here, and change the color so you can see them, make them blue. Yes, I'd like to continue Excel, thanks for asking. You can see here are my error bars and basically I just made them big so that they would fit and then change the color so that they match that background. And so I just needed to do that. And that's really all there is to it. So I know it sounds complicated maybe on, on first glance, but really it's, it's not. It's really just creating a new scatter plot series. And I'm gonna have to turn this all the way back. There we go go. Uh, maybe I have that the wrong color. Uh, I think I need that lighter color. There we go. Uh, setting up those scatter plots, putting them in the right spot, and then uh, setting those error bars to go all the way down. And I'm going to make that none. And so that disappears. All right. What else? We need to put these abbreviations in each state. 
And so this takes a little bit of work. And so what I need to do is figure out, again, the X position and the Y position, right? And so let's take a look at some of our favorite states here uh, for the map. And so we're going to start by looking at Alaska. And I will highlight this so you can see it very clearly. So I have hard-coded, just the way I did this for the slope chart tile grid map, which you can check out separately, I hard-coded the uh, row and column, right? So the row across, this is the eighth row all at the top, and it's the first column in the map. And then I have to position the, uh, the x value. And so there's a little, very little bit of math here. So I'm just going to multiply this by 12 to, uh, to get it over to the right side. And then I'm going to move it back just a little bit. So if you can see here, I've got BF5, which is the first column, times 12. And then I add uh, a little bit more and I subtracted it. And it sort of like went back and forth, which is why this is maybe not as, you know, as elegant as it might be. But you can see here, if I change this to from minus 4 to minus 0, just leave it, you will see how Alaska moves all the way over. Right, so I want to push that back a little bit. So that's the way I did that. And so that gives me the x dimension all the way down. And then the y dimension, similar sort of thing. I'm going to take the row, and I'm just going to basically play around with where I want this. You can see that I have this sort of fixed thing of subtracting 0.8. Let's subtract instead uh, 1.8 and see what happens. And so you can see that moves the Alaska thing, all the Alaska label all the way down. So this is a little bit of figuring out where that bottom part is of the square, and then just taking this, in this case, a 0.8, and in this case over here, a minus 4, and then just moving it around just a little bit, Remember that this graph, right, each square is from 0 to 1. So I don't have to use a lot of changes on the uh, vertical dimension, but the horizontal dimension, it's, you know, it's however, however many years I have here. I don't even remember. Let's do a little quick count here. 12 years times however many columns I have. So there's a lot of data along the rows, a little bit less around, around the columns. Last thing is to add my labels. And again, you know, I could just bring this into... PowerPoint or Figma or Illustrator or whatever to add these labels, but can we do it in Excel without having to use another tool, without having to use text boxes or something like that? And the answer is yes. So let me show you that little uh, set of scatter plots. Same sort of thing. You can see here I have them labeled. You can see all the way down to the bottom left here, I've got the parties, years, and percents. So the parties right here, I'm going to turn those on so you can see them. You can see that there's four. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that. There's four points there. Let's go back and let's zoom in on the years. There's going to be two here. Let's turn those on. There they are. And let's go all the way down again and grab the percents and turn those on. And here, again, you know, it's a little bit of math, but it's also a little bit of eyeballing in this case of where exactly I want to put all these labels. So I know that for the party labels, I want it to be in the 12th position because that's the last year here. Remember again, and check out some other videos to learn more about this, along the X dimension is position. It's not the year. So this is not uh, 2020. This is the 12th position in, in the chart. So I set that up there. For years again, I want it on the first, sort of the vertical axis and the horizontal, and the right vertical axis and the left vertical axis. So that's 1 and 12. And I want the presents to be on that first row as well, that first section as well. And then I just sort of play around with these with these spacing. You know, where do I want these? Well, I know I want these to be 8 because that's the row. And I know I don't want these to overlap a little bit. So I just, you know, sort of tucked it up a little bit to make it 8.1. And that moves it up just a little bit. And then I play around. I played around with these. This is really... You know, I guess I could have done like, you know, calculate the share of Republicans in the last year divided by two and get it in the right spot. But I was really just like at this point, I'm just sort of like, where is this going to look good? Does this look good here? Uh, I can move it up a little bit. And also I need to get the, the Democrat piece sort of sat right there. So, you know, you can just kind of play around, uh, play around with this to figure out exactly where you want to have these these different labels. And then you just hide the markers. And that's pretty much it. The rest of this, these are text boxes right here. I didn't feel like I needed to really uh, uh, add a scatter plot to do the uh, the text boxes here. And in this case, I use two text boxes because you can't control the uh, letting in the uh, spacing between the rows uh, in the Excel text box. So I wanted to tuck this I right sort of in there between the O and the W. If we go back to how uh, Aaron did it, you can see it's tucked right in there. So I use two text boxes to sort of tuck that in 
uh, really closely. And same thing down here, added just a little text box with the source note. So that's it. That's, uh, well, I say that's it, but now you've seen it. And so now really just think about for to create this, you could have create, you know, 51, including DC, 51 different little area charts and try to arrange them and try to do all that. Kind of hard to do, I would say. Easier to set it up this way. I've set this up so that it's really fast and really easy. If I had new data, I could just update this and probably just do a few tweaks and this map would be uh, all set to go. So I hope you found this useful. I hope you can see uh, how you can expand and uh, really hack away at Excel to get it to make things uh, that you want to make that are maybe not those standard things in that Excel drop-down menu. I put in some links below if you want to check them out. Check out uh, Aaron's work. Check out her R tutorial if you're interested. And be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can learn more about visualizing your data in Excel, in Tableau, and communicating data more generally.